Hi there. Um, I thought it'd be a good opportunity just to show you around uh, the surgery. So this is where I do all of my uh, stringing. It houses my machine and all the other bits and pieces. Um, so it's just a bit of a whistle stop tour really. So if I turn the camera away from me, then uh, let's uh, show you what's in here. So first off, uh, start with the machine. So this is my Wilson Biardo L. Um, it's, it's Wilson's latest machine. Um, it's brilliant for all different types of uh, rackets. Um, so I historically have done uh, probably about 60-70% squash, uh, followed by tennis, then a bit of racquetball and some badminton as well. Um, to be honest, I'd say at the moment, I'm probably looking at about 50%, 60% tennis, um, then followed by squash, then badminton, then racquetball. Um, you know, I'm probably stringing anything from 700 to 1,000 rackets a year. On average, uh, I did 700 rackets last year, and that was uh, with lockdown being imposed for about four or five months. Um, so, um, who who knows? <laughs> so anyway, this is uh, this is my machine. Uh, I've got a rack behind it, which I'm not sure if you can really see it from here. There we go. There's a string doctor on it. That's where I keep rackets that have been strung or need to be strung. Um, in the machine, I keep the majority of my tools, so I've got a spare. Uh, starting clamp there with a few um, bits of string wrapped around it which I use as a bridge. Most of my tools are babble at so we've got the starting clamp, we've got the Parnell pad to help protect the frame and the strings when you're um, using the starting clamp. The uh, cutters there, the snippers, got the babble at uh, tool here so this is a, a string bag cutter so it does things majorly. Got my pliers here so I've got uh, the bent nose pliers and the normal pliers. Uh, I've got the, uh, the fine awl and I've also got the setting off awl which is to straighten the strings out with. Uh, this thing here is to plunk in that hole and you can adjust the ride height on the uh, Wilson Biodo machine. Um, one thing which is really important I've also got a little vacuum cleaner. So this is what we use to see the machine a quick dust off every couple of days or so. Um, got to be careful not to get too much dust in the machine. Um, under here you might see it, I've got a whole load of old plastic reels with no string in them. Um, I'm trying to decide what to do with those. Um, from a kind of eco recycling perspective I'm not a massive fan of just chucking things in the bin. Uh, obviously the string goes in there, um, very difficult to recycle, so I do all sorts of things like make eco rackets and all kinds of crazy things where I use cut off bits of string to string. I've um, got my smart TV in the corner, it's all hooked up with a Wi-Fi booster so I can watch some squash, I can watch some tennis, I can watch films, so I was watching Happy Gilmore earlier on this, um, so I do all that whilst I'm doing some stringing. Uh, obviously strip lighting nice and easy nice and bright got some leds as well i'll be honest i just like having my colors really so it's cool to just uh get the, get yourself in the right mood when you're doing it so i can flick and change whatever uh color i want to when i'm doing it so let's go for red or should we have blue i think blue is pretty cool isn't it um so these are some of the other things so i've got my weighing scales here so that's what I use to weigh the rackets on, that measures in grams. Um, I've got my balance board here. So the balance board is used um, to basically find the balance point of a racket. So you can either go in centimetres or you can go in uh, points to the racket. Um, can I show you how it's used. If I pick a racket that I've just strung, essentially you find the uh, size of the racket, so 27 inch racket line it up and you twist the knob here until you eventually find the balance point of it which would be that's pretty close so there we go so work out how many points head light or head heavy it is There's one two three four and a bit points head heavy so that's not too bad it's pretty much to be expected on most squash rackets so get that off there um, second part of my tuning would actually be the swing rate machine 
So this is calibrated every now and again uh, using a rod, which pull out there, which just clips into the thing here. If I show you how it's actually done, that would help, wouldn't it? Let's try and do it with one hand. So you clamp the racket in, put it all the way to the side. Let it swing. 161. So it's a 130 gram squash racket. This swing weight 161. Um, now, if I wanted to make the swing weight higher, what I could use some lead tape. I've actually got reels of this stuff as well here. Um, by doing that, I can place points here at the, at the top of the head to increase the swing weight. It also makes it a little bit more head heavy as well. I want to make it more head light and decrease well you wouldn't necessarily decrease the swing weight too much unless you take the lead physically off here so the more you have towards the end the higher the swing weight goes um, but if you attach um, lead to the handle it's not going to decrease the swing weight necessarily unless you take the stuff off the, the, the top first of all um, but if you want to make the balance um, change the balance points you place lead at different points of the racket um, you can also use silicon so silicone, take the butt cap off, fill the butt cap, butt cap so fill the, the handle rather with silicone, carefully measure it out using the scales over there, um, then check it on the balance board and on here. So do it a little bit by bit and you can actually um, match rackets to make sure they're all at the same swing weight, same balance, same weight, same everything. Um, a little tip that I use is use blue tack. Uh, so weigh some blue tack bits first of all, put it at various different points of the racket, and then you can effectively substitute the blue tack for a similarly weighted amount of um, lead tape. Um, for these things, so these are sleeves, so these go on the end of the grip, they slip on, and I've got my mini blowtorch here, which you hold at a safe distance away, and just heat up the, uh, the sleeve on here, and it means you can change the grip size. On the, uh, on the other racket so if you one of these people that likes to put tons of grips on grips on your racket underneath the one that you're playing with to make it fatter sometimes I can add loads of weight to your racket um, and change the balance considerably so uh, it's not ideal to always do that whereas if you use this it's light as a feather and it weighs a few grams so better to do that than to add another 10 grams of weight just by using another, another grip um, and this thing here turn it on so this is the Prote One Chromatic String Tuner. Now this is something which I've got, which is pretty new uh, to me. Let's see if I can just place it down here. So this measures the dynamic tension, racket stiffness, a whole load of different things. I'm not sure if you can see here, um, but it gives you an option to select what you want. So if I've, let's say, I wanna have a look at this racket here, um, see what the dynamic tension of the racket is choose multi-filament string you've actually got a specific squash setting there as well but i just go for multi-fill uh, it's a 1.25 10 to 5 or 305 i'm using actually strings 77.5 inch head size uh, which is 500 centimeters squared um, so that's fine i'm going to keep some normal that's just basically the string pattern to make sure it's not completely crazy um, and then I can move it to chromatic dynamic tension. There's whole loads of things you can use stiffness. So um, the racket stiffness, the string stiffness, but for now, the majority of what I use it for is actually just to do a bit of a sense check on the rackets afterwards. So if I just take this racket out here, so I'm trying to do all this with one hand, which isn't necessarily easy. Um, you place the microphone here, so you get it underneath there, maybe not the right way, probably not. There you go, so it's better. And what you actually do is, they actually recommend that you use a setting off all, which is nice and blunt. And I find the best way of doing this actually.
So there we go. So you can see there, it's showing that the, that the dynamic tension on this racket is 32.2 pounds. Now, actually, um, with this racket, I'd hasten to add that I've actually strung this racket at 27 pounds. Um, so although it's showing 31.9 pounds of tension there, that's the dynamic tension. So that's basically, the, it's not the tension the strings pull that, it's the actual tension of the string bed. So because you've got the strings quite close together, it means they, they feel uh, tight because you've got the crosses and you've got the mains all interweaving over each other. To be honest with you, I don't really focus too much on what it says on here. When I'm stringing in batches of, racket, of rackets, especially for some of the pros I string for, or some of the better players, um, what's really important is that that number there is pretty much the same on all of them. I mean, generally speaking, if I string three rackets for somebody, identical strings, identical tension, identical rackets, same balance and everything, um, I'd be expecting uh, that number to be within sort of 0 0.1, 0 0.2 uh, variance. And I always test it immediately after stringing on each one just so I'm getting the variables correct. So uh, there's no point in, in testing them all straight after you've strung all of them in terms of all three after you've strung all three rackets, for example, because you'll find that one racket was strung 45 minutes ago, another was strung five minutes ago. And I'd expect this tension here by the morning to have probably dropped down to about 29.30. Uh, you lose roughly about 10% um, attention, five, ten percent attention uh, overnight or within certainly within 12 to 24 hours. But do each one after you've done that, and you should um, have an idea of how consistent you are. The whole thing with the chromatic uh, frequency testing is that um, it picks up the tone of, of the strings a little bit like a guitar tuner as well. But this is made specifically for uh, tennis and squash and badminton and other racket sports. Um, you put a whole different load of strings in there, so synthetic gut, multi-filament, natural gut, polyester, um, even Kevlar. So it basically equalises depending on what string you've got, uh, what type of racket size you've got, um, even how close the strings are to, to each other. And it can also do hybrid setups if you've got two different types of strings. So this is a really cool tool. It's not cheap. It's from Italy. There aren't too many of these things around, so you do pay them but um, for a pro stringer somebody that's qualified to to string to a high standard uh, it's a pretty useful thing so anyway um, you probably want to know where I keep my strings actually so I tend to separate so I have reels that goes too deep of tennis strings there so it's probably about 15 20 reels in there uh, similar with the squash I probably need to sort that out a bit they're all over the place a little bit um, and I keep my sets of string in here. So I generally tend to use reels, but as you can see I've got loads and loads of sets of string um, in here. Um, I've separated more into poly, into multi-filament. Uh, these are majority tennis, a few badminton strings there. Um, and the, this is the squash side. Um, but again, most of the strings I use will be straight off the reel. Um, this is my kind of... Uh, Odds box, so it's got some grommets in it, it's got some uh, little eyelets, it's got some, you can probably see it poking out there. Um, got a couple of spare pots of uh, Wilson, Yonex, and Technofiber ink in there. Uh, got a little pouch there with a bit more ink in them. Got some grips, lots and lots of different grips there. Some business cards, um, very important, some anti back wipe. Um, so important to use anti back. Um, especially at the moment keep things nice and clean uh little folder there with some magazine cuttings and things off, off it there cotton wool so what do i use cotton wool for um so you actually use that when you take the butt cap off handle and place silicon on it shove some cotton wool in there and um it'll actually uh just basically stop the silicon from seeping through down through into the frame of the racket um, if I want to sit down, um, I use my stool. Oh, another little device here. So this is my electronic staple gun. Good old Stanley. Um, and it uses tacks which go into the butt of the handle to 
essentially keep the, the button handle in, in place, the button grip in place. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. And there's my little wall of fame there. Um, I'm just adding to this every now and again. It's got some old vintage rackets that I've picked up, restored. Uh, and that's just a bit of a kind of crazy design I did. From one of my eye rackets where I did a kind of diamond shape on there um, during the first lockdown. Uh, and the heater for those cold winter months. Always going to need that. And I keep a load of other stuff in here. So that's pretty much it for me. Um, also got a printer down there so I can print some things off. And a few spare reels of, sorry, spare sets of string too. Um, so yeah, lots of stuff, but hopefully that gives you a bit more insight as to where I am with all my stringing tools and how I go about things. And oh, little fan in the corner there as well, just for when it gets really, really warm. Blinds up, all windows all around, so I can open those in the months as well. And a little hook up there for my camera for when I'm stringing. Anyway, uh, thanks for allowing me to give you a tour. Cheers. Bye.